Okay, I think we are live. Um, hi, second day in a row. Um, if you're here with me, send me a little message so I can know you're here. Um, for all of, the, of you guys that came and practiced with me yesterday, thank you very much. The feedback was great. I had a lot of fun um, teaching from my living room. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to do it again today. So uh, I have Tootsie with me, my little dog. I don't think you can see her. She's on this little red bench here next to my mat. So she will be practicing with us. Um, yeah. She's kind of out of it. I'm not sure she's going to do the poses. So um, today, uh, you know, thinking about everything that's going on in the world, uh, I figured we're going to put a little bit of balance in. Um, a little bit of balance, just to kind of root us down. So uh, one of the spiritual teachers I follow uh, was talking about how this is really root chakra stuff that's going on outside. And it's not, it, it, it's affecting everyone. Um, and it's really jarring. Root chakra is our, our base chakra right at our tailbone. That's our sense of survival. So for all of us, it's just been knocked. So we're going to see some interesting behavior from ourselves, from others. I mean, it's really a, a primal kind of reaction that we're all going through. So, um, and I love what they said, which was allow everyone to have their reaction, um, whatever it may be, and hold space for that reaction, because it really is a trying time. And if there's any time, any time for us to come together and understand and listen without judgment and let other people have any kind of reaction they want, that's, that's really the kind and loving way to go. That's the yogi way to go, you know. Um, and then to make sure you give space for yourself, to whatever fear or actions or, or emotions you're experiencing, hold space for that. Know that it's okay, whatever it is. Um, in the meantime, while we practice our yoga, we will be doing root chakra balancing poses. So um, balancing, really getting rooted down to the earth with, um, you know, uh, forward folds, um, strong poses, things of that nature. Uh, I think that's about it. Lecture's done before we get started. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's start. Yay. Hey, Betsy. Hey, Bridget. Okay. Child's pose. So let's see. I will bring this down while we start on the mat so you can see me a little bit better and then I'll move it up. Okay. So big toes touch. Separate the knees. Hips come all the way back. Walk your hands forward. Gaze is between the thumbs if you'd like a little bit more of a shoulder stretch. Otherwise, third eye comes down. Really ground down through your palms. Engage your mula bandha, root block. Keep pressing the earth away. Hips shifting backwards. Watch the breath. Notice the ribs as you breathe in, the expansion. And then notice the exhale, the ribs falling closer to the earth. Take about two more breaths on your own. When you're ready, walk your hands all the way over to the left. Belly is on top of left quad. Ground down through left hand, right hand on top of left. Stretch out. Really root down through your right hip, so keep pushing that right hip back. A few breaths here. And after you stretch out the right side, you inhale back to center. And exhale over to the right. So ground down through that left sit bone. Right hand grounds, left hand on top of right. Stretch. Breathing through the left side. And then on your exhale, bring it back to center. Inhale, shift into your tabletop pose. So come on up, rotate the eyes of the elbows forward. So take your inhale, cow pose, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, press the ground away, really dome the back, and then almost come forward a little bit. So you're gripping the floor with your fingers and pushing your straight arms. Inhale back to cow, heart comes forward. Exhale, cow. Push down through the shins, tops of the feet. Again, inhale. 
Exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Good. Come back to your neutral spine. So take your right leg and step it all the way back. So I'm going to show you from this angle, actually. All right, so I'm going to work. Take your right leg, step it back. Take your left leg and turn it out. Then take your left hand in line with left leg. Actually, I'll go this way. There we go. Okay. So this is your left knee. Left hand is out in front. Press down through the bladed side of your right foot. Right arm goes over your ear. And then make sure your shoulder is stacked over the elbow, stacked over the wrist. Really push down through the bladed side of that right foot. Take a breath in here. Breath out. On your inhale, your right hand is going to come down to right leg. Left arm is going to go up, and you're going to stretch the left side of your body. Take a breath in. Reach. Twist your chest up. Exhale. Keep stretching. Back and forth. Inhale down. Open up. Exhale. Bring it up. Inhale down. Exhale up. One more time, inhale down, and exhale up. Turning on your obliques, right? And then come back down, this time, root the left hand down, lift your right leg up, right arm over the head, open the chest, right elbow, left knee. Excuse me, right elbow, right knee, for one, three times. Two, waking up the hips, the core. And three, this time modified chaprasana, I think it's called. So you're going to bend your right leg, left, or excuse me, right hand grabs for the right foot, and then kick your right foot into your hand and open your chest. For three, two, deep breaths, and one. Relax your pose. Beautiful. Come back into your tabletop pose. Shake it out just a little bit. Maybe flip the wrists. Have a little bit of a wrist stretch. We're going to be doing a little bit on the wrist today, not as much as yesterday. So anything that feels good to really get in there, I like to do some hip circles. Flip the fingers to face either side of the mat. Really grab the floor. Good. And now we're going to do the other way. So this time, your left leg is going to step back. You're going to pivot your right shin out, and then right hand goes in front of right knee. Really ground down through the bladed side of left foot. Left arm goes over the ear. Chest is up. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. On your inhale, come on up. Use your obliques. Left hand goes down, left leg. Right arm goes over the ear. Breath out here. One more breath in. Breath out, circle it down to the floor. We're going to tick tock back and forth. Inhale, bring it up. Engage your Mula Bandha, push into the blade or side of that left foot. Exhale, bring it back down. Again, inhale to come up. Exhale to go down, ground down to that right hand. Again, inhale. Really go deep this time on the right side, and then exhale, lower your right hand down, left arm over the ear, lift up your left leg, flex the foot, take a breath in, open your chest. Exhale, left elbow, left knee, crunch. One, inhale out. Exhale, two. Last one, inhale. Exhale, crunch it in for three. This time on your inhale, reach it long, bend your left leg, left arm circles around to grab that foot, ground down through right foot, and then kick left foot into left hand and open your chest for three. Deep breaths, two, and one. Relax, come back into your tabletop pose. You guys can't see this dog, but she's asleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, from here, tuck your toes. Downward facing dog. Separate your feet to shoulder distance. Separate your hands to shoulder distance. And then kind of play with this, any creature comforts that you need. Like I said yesterday, if you want to bend your knees a lot, that kind of elongates the spine a little bit more. I don't know if you can see that, that move. If you want to get a little bit more into the hamstrings and the calves, you can straighten and see if you can put the heel down onto the mat. But do push the ground away and see how close you can get your head to the earth. The armpits are rotating, rotating towards one another. Shake out the head. Any tension comes out of the neck. And then from here, 
Lift up your heels. Inhale. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, the lift. Exhale, the lower. Okay. From here, walk your feet up just a little bit so the entire bottom of your foot is down if it's not already. Okay? So you want to be pretty sturdy. Lift up the left hand. You can stay right there, or excuse me, the right hand, or you can also pick up left foot. Stay here. Or if you want, you can bend your left leg. See if I've got this. Grab the left foot. <laughs> And then lengthen the left knee up for three, two, woo, and one. Release. <laughs> All right, other side, if you're ready, ground down through the left foot. Left hand lifts up just a little bit. Lift up right leg. Push the ground away with right hand. Bend right leg. Grab right ankle or the foot with left hand, and then kick the knee straight up to the sky. Hold here for three, two, and one. Relax. <laughs> all right. Inhale, lift up your heels. Exhale, walk on the bottom ones of your feet all the way up until your toes are behind your wrists. Right there. Ragdoll, bend your knees. Bellies on quads, actually making contact here. Interlace your hands, and then start to sway from left to right. Deep breaths. Any way that feels good. Maybe switch out your grip so the opposite forearms on top. Weights in the ball mounds of your feet. And then release your hands. Okay, you'll toe your feet together. Big toes touch. Separate all of your toes as much as they can go. And then forward fold, chin to chest, look at your navel. And then from here, rise all the way up to standing, bone by bone. And I'm going to adjust the camera here a little bit. All the way up you come. Reach your arms all the way up. And then come into some of DTEs. And now we're going to have a little bit of a flow. Let's see if you can see me here. OK. Great. So it's on the CTE, fingers, middle fingers, and align with your IT bands. Keep your shoulders back. <laughs> now she's just staring at me. You can see her. Inhale, reach your arms up. Keep your hips where they are. Exhale, open arm twist to the left. Left arm back, right arm forward. Look back at that left thumb. Inhale, bring it back up. Keep your shoulders soft. Exhale, open arm twist to the right. Look back at your right thumb. Inhale, bring it back up to mountain. Engage your fingers. Exhale, take your back bend, elbows to kidneys, lean back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold, hands them all the way down. Ideally, fingernails in line with your toenails on that fold. And then tuck your chin to your chest and look at your belly button. Inhale, halfway lift. See if you can keep your hands on the ground, the whole palm. If that's not happening, you can feel free to bring your hands out forward a little bit more, or to your shins, or even up here to your quads. So your choice. No, nothing is wrong. So, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Look at your belly button. Inhale, plank pose. You can step it back, right and left, or jump, whatever you want to do. Stay for your exhale. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Untuck the toes. Inhale, up dog. Look up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's just warm up the core a little bit. Come to your plank pose. And then from here, you're going to tap your knees down to the mat and then come back up. We're going to go for 20. You ready? 20, 19, 18 straight arms, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, breathe, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, last four. Here we go. Three. Two, and one, downward facing dog. Good. Inhale, lift up your heels. Exhale, bend your knees, walk, step, or jump. Forward fold. When you get to the top, look at your belly button. Again, fingernails in line with your toenails if you can, otherwise they're out in front. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan all the way up, press your palms. 
Exhale, thumbs to heart. Inhale, reach it up, mountain pose again. Exhale, open arm twist to the left. Keep your hips square, so notice if that's happening, keep them pointed towards the front. Inhale, lift it all the way up. Exhale, open arm to the right. Look at your right thumb. Inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, cactus. Elbows back, lean back, look up. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Fingernails and line with toenails. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, walk, step, or jump. High to low. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, inhale, shift into your blind one more time. A little bit more outward. So you're going to tap your right foot out and then left foot out. For 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, strong arms, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Downward facing dog. Inhale, lift up your heels. Exhale, bend your knees. Look forward, walk, step, or jump. Forward fold, look at your belly button. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse, all the way up. Press your palms, look at your thumbs. Exhale, thumbs to heart. Last time. Inhale, lift it all the way up, lift your quads, lift your ribs. Exhale, open arm twist to the right, or left, rather, excuse me. Inhale all the way up. Exhale to the right. Inhale to lift. Exhale to take your back bend. Lean back. Inhale lift. Exhale forward fold. Fingernails in line with toenails. Look at your belly. Inhale halfway. Exhale chaturanga. Walk step or jump. Up dog. Inhale. Exhale, down dog. Good. From here, inhale, shift into your plank one more time. Last set. Right knee, right tricep. Left knee, left tricep. Ready? Go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. Down dog. Done with abs. Ah, breathe. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward, walk, step, or jump. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold, look at your belly. Inhale, reverse, all the way up. Press your palms. Exhale, sum of CTE. Inhale, chair. Sit down low. Sweep the arms up. Biceps behind the ears. Sit a little bit lower. Squeeze the legs together. Breath in. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half. Exhale, chat around the high to low push up. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Step your left foot down 45 degrees, come into warrior one, right foot comes up. Breathe here. Keep that left hip forward. Breath in. Exhale, release the hands behind your back. Interlace, right thumb on top, press your palms. Take a breath in to lean back. And then exhale, humble warrior. Right shoulder inside, right knee. Look in between the legs or at your belly button, full expression. Push into the blade edge side of left foot. And then bring the knuckles closer to the front of the room. Three. Two. And one. Release the bind. Inhale back to warrior one. And then prepare for warrior two. So open all the way up. Bend up that right knee. So you can kind of, I always like to just roll, take the opportunity to roll my wrist in this one. Make sure right knee is above the right pinky toe. I always like to kind of 
cheat just a little bit, make it a nice wide warrior two. So this is a really proud pose. Like here we are in the middle of this crisis, but we are here, right? Ready. From here, inhale, reverse triangle. Left arm goes down, right arm high. Squeeze the legs together even though they're open. Press into the blade or the ball mount of your front foot. Lean back. And exhale, triangle. Bump the hips backwards. You may take your left foot and heel toe it up just a little bit. And then right arm can go to shin, inside the foot or outside the foot, your choice. Left arm goes up. Look up the left thumb. For three, two, and one. Rebend the front leg. Inhale, reverse warrior, half bind here. Grab that left or right hip. <laughs> Exhale, extended side ankle pose. Right hand inside the foot or outside the foot. And then left arm over the ear. Three, two, and one. From here, come into star. So open all the way up. You may have to adjust your feet a little bit like I did. Heel toe. So constantly move just to see where your hips are, what feels good. Yoga should always kind of feel good, you know? So if it feels too wide, it probably is. Bring it in just a little bit. My toes are out 45 degrees. Reach your arms up. Take up a ton of space in your home. <laughs> like, here I am, I'm practicing yoga. This can't get me down. Take a breath in, lift your chest, lift your heart, exhale, goddess pose. This is a great one for your root chakra. We're gonna stay here for a little bit, really press your palms together, soften your shoulders, engage your mula bandha. So lift through the pelvic floor. Option to lift up your heels for three, two, and one. Lower the heels, inhale back to star, open up, lean back, Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse triangle, just passing through. Maybe lean back a little bit deeper this time. On your exhale, windmill your hands down, frame your right foot. Pivot to the ball mount of your left foot. Inhale, back to down dog or three-legged dog. Exhale, chaturanga to dasana, high to low push-up option for chin stand. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Inhale, left leg high. Look between the hands. Exhale, step it through. So I'm going to turn around so it looks this way. So now you're in warrior one feet. Inhale into warrior one. Again, square the hips. So notice that that right hip is trying to open. Keep it closed. Keep your left knee over that ankle. And then reach your arms up. Soft shoulders. Biceps back. Belly's in. Soft face. Deep breaths. Push into the blade of side of your right foot. Be able to stretch along the right hip. And on your exhale, open up into warrior two. So if your right foot back, line up the left heel with the right arch. Again, notice that angle of your front leg. You want it to be nice and deep. So you can roll in the wrists. Mula bond is engaged. Inhale, reverse triangle. Straighten your front leg. Right arm down, left arm high. Really lean back. Take a breath in. Squeeze the legs together. Then exhale, triangle. So I need to heel toe my right foot in just a little bit for this. And then bump your hips to the back. Left hand goes down. Right arm goes up. You can be on shin, inside, or outside. If this is hurting, again, you can take your right hip and close it just a little bit. Otherwise, see if you can peel it open. For three. Two. And one from here, come into star. So sweep it all the way up. Star pose. So heel toe, then feet together, 45 degree angle. And then exhale, goddess, this time do lat pull down. So the elbows come to your kidneys. Really lean, like so the shoulders are directly over the hips. Sit a little deeper. Inhale back to star, open up. Squeeze the legs. Exhale, lat pull down, goddess. Again, inhale. Squeeze. Exhale, lower. One more inhale. Exhale, lower. On the last inhale, come back to star. Exhale, warrior two. Left leg is still in front. Inhale, reverse triangle, just passing through. Lean back a little bit more. And exhale, windmill your hands down, frame your left foot. Pivot to the ball mount of right foot. Inhale, three-legged dog or down dog. Vinyasa through, high to low push-up. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Right here. And one out. 
And now we're going to move on to a little bit of balancing. Oof, I'm sweating already. <laughs> All right, inhale, lift up your heels. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward, walk, step, or jump. Forward fold. I'll meet you over here again. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up, sweep your arms up, press your palms. Exhale, thumbs to heart. Okay, so for the balancing, this mat's a little bit thick, so I'm going to take it off just for a moment. And use the carpet, so I can grab the floor a little bit better. <laughs> all right, so for our balancing, let's start in one-legged Tadasana. Ground down through your left foot. Pull your ribs up, pull all your organs up, squeeze your belly in. Lift the thighs, right? Lift your shins. Lift your chest, one-legged. Lift your right leg 90 degrees. Reach your arms up. Notice if that right leg is sassing up, bring it back down so that your yoga pant line is in line. Flex the right foot. Take a breath in, and then your exhale, figure four. So sit down low. And then from here, you can do any variations that you like. You can come down a little bit more, so you can actually put your forearms on your shin. You can bring your hands to the ground, and then you can grab your left arm with your right toes. And this is an amazing stretch. So if you want to stay here, this is where you can stay. You can start to really bend that left knee and come down a little bit lower. If you want to take flight, you're welcome to. So you hook that arm. Have your chaturanga arms ready to go. Your elbows are going to bend back, and you're going to come forward and take flight, lifting up that left leg for three. Deep breaths, two, and one. Go ahead and lower that left leg if you took flight. Walk your hands back up. And then from here, left hand comes to your hip. Right two piece fingers, hook your right big toe. Inhale, Utita Pada Gustasana. So slowly lift up. Straighten your right leg. If you want more, lift up the leg higher. Maybe chin to shin, your choice. Hold for five. This is where we practice. Four. Three. Two. And one. Open the leg. Open the door. Lift it up a little bit more. Look over your left shoulder for three. Two. And one on your inhale, bring it back to center. And then a little maneuver, you're going to bend the leg, grab for the foot, and then come into dancer pose. So your right hand is grabbing right foot, left arm is by the ear. Kick your right leg into your right arm and lift. Maybe a mudra with your left finger, so the thumb and the first finger connect. Bicep by the ear, kick, balance, strong left leg. You can bend it if you want and then straighten it back up for extra work. Your choice for three. Two, and one. Finally, we're going to come into tree. So if you want to stay balanced, do that. So you can have kickstand, shin, or inner thigh. Make sure it's anywhere but the knee. Once you're there, palms come together. Press them firmly. Press your right leg into, or excuse me, your right foot into left leg. Left leg back into right foot. And breathe. For three. Two, lift your belly. And one, maybe reach the branches open for three. Mula Banda, two. Grab the floor with your left foot. And one, beautiful, relax. Optional vinyasa, inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, cheddar with Dandasana. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward and jump. Inhale, up uh, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Good. Left side. Ground down through your right leg. Left leg lifts up. Palms press. Notice again, if that left leg is higher, bring it down. Grab the floor with your right foot. Squeeze the belly. Single point gaze. So find something that's not moving to look at. 
I'm kind of moving. <laughs> Hold here. And then as you're ready, figure four. Flex your left foot, start to come down. So you're bending your right knee and really opening up through that left hip. Feel any kind of subtle sensations going on in the body? That's where you want to be. Keep pressing your palms. Keep your breath soft. Keep bending your right knee. You can stay here, or you can start to bring your hands down to the ground. Again, you can stay here. Huge stretch if you want to hook your what is that, left toes around your right arm. Come forward, chaturanga style. And then take flight by lifting up your right leg. Breathe for three, two, and one. Slowly lower your right leg back down. Come on back up. Nice and slow. Your right hand is going to uh, hug your right hip. Left two peace fingers. Hook around your left big toe. And on your inhale, come on up to Uttita Parangasasana. Part two. So hold it here. If you want to take it up a notch, lift it a little bit higher. Take it higher. Maybe drop your forehead to your shin. Come back up for five. Soft shoulders, four. Three. Two. And one. Open the door. Three breaths here. Keep it nice and high. Look over your right shoulder. For three, two, and one on your inhale, bring it back to center, nice and slow. Keep a hold of that foot, bend the knee, switch your grip, dancer pose. Left foot kicks into left hand, right arm by the ear, take your mudra, thumb in your first finger, and then kick the foot into the hand. Lean forward, so you're leading with your chest. Three, two, and one. Tree pose. Ideally, without touching the ground, can you find kickstand, shin, or inner thigh? Bring your palms together. Press left foot into right leg, right leg into left foot. Squeeze your belly. Move a banda. Grab the floor with right foot. For three, press the palms. Two, deep breaths, and one. Maybe open your arms for three, two, and one. Relax all the way down. Very nice. Okay. From here, we're actually going to come onto our bellies. So I'll move this up a little bit. Find your way down onto your stomach. Okay, this is our attempt number two, so I still don't know whether the sound is good or anything, but let's see. Oh, yay. Okay, I can see you guys. Yay, thank you for being here. It looks like it's working. Um, <laughs> all right, so now it's time for a little bit of front stretching that's going to look like back bending. So what uh, I've learned recently is that a lot of us think that our spines just don't bend, which is, you know, in back bends, which is partially true. Um, but the biggest issue a lot of times is that your front is tight. So the chest might be tight. The abs might be tight. Your quads, your shins, your ankles. So if any of those don't open up, it's really hard to do a back bend because you have to be stretching in the front, right? So we're going to do a little bit of that today. First things first. <clears throat> Let's reach all the way forward. Reach your legs back. Bend your left leg. Take your... Right arm up so you can have your elbow on the ground, if that makes sense. And then grab your left foot and then just stretch it down. This isn't doesn't have to look any kind of way. We're just kind of getting an initial stretch. So the fingers can face backwards towards the knees. And then use the strength of your arm to really push it down. The heel is outside the glute, so it's not on the glute, it's outside. Hold for three. Two, cease to sleep. Two. And one. Switch. 
So your left elbow's down now. Take your right hand, fingers pointed down, and then just give it a push, a little stretch. Make sure you're not dumping, though, while you're doing it. So do stay up. Keep your shoulder away from your ear on the left side. And then exhale lower. Maybe windshield wiper your knees. So this releases the lumbar, the low back. All right, from here, bend your left leg, grab your left foot, right arm goes long. You're gonna kick your left foot into your left hand, lift your right leg, and lift your right arm. So we're gonna hold here for three, two, kick, and one, relax, switch. Right hand, right foot, left arm straight. Full expression is the knees are together. But if, if your back is tight, or rather your chest is not stretched, but like mine, feel free to leave your knees wider, right? Okay. And your inhale, kick your right foot into your right hand, lift your left, all the way up for three, two, and one, relax. All right, from here, we're going to go for full, what do they call it, Dhanurasana, floor bow. Um, bend your knees. Grab for your feet. Lift up into floor bow. So first, exhale out everything. And then on your inhale, kick your feet into your hands and lift up. So you should feel a really big stretch actually along the biceps, the shoulders, right? So see how high you can lift here. For three, two, one. Keep a hold. You're going to roll to the right, all the way to the right. Again, see how open my knees are? If you are more comfortable, you keep your knees together. Try that. That's the full expression. If you need to separate your knees because your back hurts, feel free. The less pain, the better. Then you're going to inhale, come back to center, into your floor while kick up. Exhale over to the left. Hold here. For three, two, and one. Come back to center. To the right. Just back and forth, your pace. Center, to the left. Center, to the right. Ugh. One more to the left, inhale, and over to the left. Good. Come back, and relax. Maybe take your hands to your low back. Make some space, so push down on your glutes, and that should feel really good in your low back if you feel any pressure. All right. From here, we're going to stretch out the chest. So come with me. You're going to tee your arms out. Look over to your left. Bend your left leg. Now take your left hand towards your face. Then you're going to push into your left hand and take your left foot up and back. Keep pressing into your right arm so your right arm is really straight. You can see me. Let's see. Okay, that's how it's going to look on the other side. Yeah, I'll just stay here. <clears throat> Okay, so if this is a good stretch for you, you can stay right here. So that should be really stretching along the shoulder, along the chest. Keep pressing down through your hands, spread out all the fingers and grab the floor. If you want more, you can take your left hand all the way back and grab, let's see, I have to get into it this way, but that's cheating. Grab hands <laughs> to get a little bit more of a shoulder stretch. Hold here, and then maybe look over that left shoulder if the neck is okay for three. Two, and one, relax, come back to center. Let's do the left side. Left arm down, she's having a dream now. <laughs> okay, left arm down, right hand by your face, right leg goes up, twist, tap the ground behind you, and then I kind of scoot that left arm even more over at that point. Lift your right knee up. And then again, you can stay right where you are. Feel all this expansion in the left chest, the shoulder. You can feel it on your um, left forearm. I can't point to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, if you want that same variation, you can flip your left hand over and then grab hands. Maybe look over your right shoulder for three, two, and one. Relax. Come back over. This is one of my new favorite poses for stretching out your arms. So for those of us working on um, handstand practice, 
shoulders can get really, really tight or any kind of arm balances. So here's how we fix it. And I don't know what we did yesterday, but I think the class online that we did made my shoulders sore. So this will be a good one. Take your right arm as far to the left as you can. And then take your left hand face up over the right. Okay, now you're going to see how much you can squeeze them together. Both palms are facing up. Once you do that, I use my feet. Oh, kind of like pretzel it out here. You're going to tuck your toes, lift your knees, and then inch forward. And we're going to stay here for just a second. And then feel all that space along your shoulder blades. Ooh. In the shoulders. Hold here. Three. Breathing deep. Two. And one. Take it out. Slow and steady. And now we're going to the other side. So this time, well, actually, you can come into this pose right here. Take your hands in front and have a little bit of a back bend. Straight arms. Maybe look up, stretching out the front of your neck. However oh, feels good. Next up, we're going to go the other way. So this time, your left arm goes under. Right arm goes on top. I think that was the other way. Get them as far away from each other as you can. Palms face up. Tuck your toes. Lift the knees. And then scooch forward. I think this was the other way. If it's not, then go the other way. Two, three. Two. And one. Relax. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. So now we're ready for a little bit of back bends. We're going to do camel, three camels. Bend your knees, shift your hips up. Tuck your toes. And then come all the way up. All right. So level one, hands on your back, right here. That's it. So you're kind of, again, like we were doing before, you're pushing your glutes down so you can give your low back some space. And then you just stay right there. Keep pushing your hips forward. If this happens, then that's that's not correct. We want your hips over your knees all the time. So if you need to have a wall in front of you to push your hips into, then that's that's a good choice as well. Um, but yeah, so hold your pose. If you're ready for the second one, you can stay, or you can drop your hands down to your heels, and then drop your head. So this really gets into the front of the neck. Pull here. Three. Two. And one. And then the next option I actually do not have in my practice. But if you wanted to come all the way down to your elbows, you could untuck your toes and then come all the way back to your elbows. Otherwise, maybe you untuck your toes and just go for a deeper stretch of camel here. For three. Two, and one. Chin the chest. Come on back up. Oh, and then shift it back. Okay, maybe take a little child's pose to counter that out. I mean, you can keep your knees together, which is what I like to do after that pose, and then grab your heels and come into a tight, tight little ball. The notice that that releases your low back at all. And release. Let's get into the hips just a little bit more. Come into your um, down dog. I'll face here. And on your exhale, let's come into single leg pigeon. So your right leg high. Siri thinks I'm talking to her. And then right knee, right wrist. Curl all the shin if you can. <laughs> the phone thinks I'm talking to it. Okay. Uh, all right, so with pigeons also, if you have knees that hurt, you want to bend your knee more, okay? So in class, we always say parallel the shin, which means get that shin really straight. But if you have knee issues, and not even knee issues, if it's sensitive at all, you want to bend the knee, okay? So again, we want to minimize pain when we're practicing yoga because 
the good news is we get to do this for the rest of our lives. It's not like if we push it more one day and it get more pain, then we can get there faster. Not really. And even if we got there faster, there's going to be another pose that we want the next day. So it doesn't even matter. So the less pain, the better, the more enjoyable the yoga practice, the better, because this is what we do, right? Um, some days are great. Some days are not so great. That's just, that's, that's the life of a yogi. All right. Tuck your back toes. So here's how I kind of like to get into it. So tuck your back toes, lift the knee, and then I scooch backwards. Lower the thigh, lower the top. If you want more, you can press into the top of that foot. Option to come down. Option to come all the way to sleeping pigeon. And if you do want more, um, if you have a strap, well, I'll talk to you guys about props. But if you want more, you can come up and bend that top leg and maybe slide the foot into the left elbow crease and then hook and take your mermaid. So if you are done with back bends, but if you are, come back into your pigeon and just hang out. Enjoy the pose. Hold for three, two, and one. Start to walk your hands up. Tuck your back toes, lift up your back knee. Three-legged dog, shake it out, make some hip circles. Nice big hip circles. Other direction. You can even leave it straight. I mean, this is your practice. Whatever you feel is good. Oof. And then left side. So then left leg goes high. Left knee, left wrist. Notice the knee. Notice the shin angle. So again, the toes tucked in the back. Slide it back. Untuck the toes. Make sure the hips are square. So what that means is if you feel yourself going over to the left, you want to push into the top of your right foot. And make sure you can balance first by staying up. And then at that point, if you are ready, you can start to come down onto your elbows. You can take sleeping pigeon with your palms face down. So this is plenty. If you do want to take your mermaid, you can bend up your right leg. And usually we're in class where we're sweaty. I'm actually not that sweaty at the moment, so it's harder. But you use your sweat to slide that foot into the middle part of your right elbow. Grease. And then left arm goes up and up. So you can stay there if that feels good. Or come back and join us in your comfortable pigeon. Maybe comfortable, maybe not. So this, you know, I've been thinking about this time and where we are and, and everyone's reactions, and it really is kind of a blessing in disguise. This is an opportunity for us to witness um, very raw emotions from ourselves and others and a perfect time to practice kindness. One of my favorite teachers says, just be nice, just be nice, just be nice. You know, whatever whatever comes at us, just be nice. People need nice people. I need nice people. All right, start to walk your hands back up. Tuck your toes. Lift up your right knee. Yep, and then on your inhale, lift your left leg all the way up. Make some circles. Other direction. You can lengthen the leg if that feels good. And then downward facing dog. From here, walk it all the way forward and have a seat. Okay. Reach your legs forward. Get the flesh out from under your sit bones. Take a breath in. Reach your arms up. And then exhale, fold. Any hand arrangement on your feet is fine. The goal is to have your feet kind of flexed and then pulling your pinky toes towards you and then pushing your big toes away. If you have that without using your hands, 
you can interlace behind you. You can take a mudra. It's whatever's comfortable. Ideally, you want your belly on your quads. So if you're finding that you're rounding your back and your belly's not on your thighs, then you need to bend your knees. Right? And again, there's no shame in any of this. Every body is, literally every body's body is different. So there are some poses where people just nail it from day one, like my brother in lotus pose who never does yoga, and I have yet to get. <laughs> and then there's other people that have other poses just given to them. So I, it's, it's really a humbling practice. And um, yeah, there's always things to learn about yourself and your other and others and also watch your own reactions when you're trying to get something and doesn't happen as quickly as you'd like. It, yoga makes us better people, you know, it really teaches us who we are by, by allowing us to witness ourselves while we practice. All right, start to come back up. Um, let's take left foot. Um, actually, yeah, the right foot is going to not be quite as far out as I was thinking. Left foot inside the thigh, or if you'd like, half lotus. Half, not full. <laughs> See how low you can get that left knee. And then from here, right hand grabs the right foot, and then maybe your left hand, arm goes all the way around and grabs the left toes. Hold here, chin to shin for three. If that's not working, put the bottom of left foot inside the thigh. Okay. Two. And one. Switch. So again, protect that knee. Make sure the knee's okay. Give it a little massage. Now the right heel goes into the stomach almost. So it's all the way up. Does that make sense? This is also where you have to have some ankle mobility, which we stretched out earlier. So once that's up, Take your right arm all the way around, maybe hook the foot. That's the goal. If that's not working, you're right here, okay? Otherwise, you're up here, hook the foot, left hand, left foot, chin to shin. For three, two, and one, the last. All right, very good. One. Uh, cobbler's pose. Feet touch. So this is another really big root chakra one because your root chakra is literally it's um, this one and this one are great for root chakra just because you're right there grounding on the earth. Open up your feet a little bit. Use your elbows. Open up the knees. Keep your chest coming forward. Give yourself a little bit of a foot massage. Alright, go ahead and close your knees. Hey. You guys can't see her, she's awake now, just staring at me creepily. Oh, yes, I'm talking about you. Okay, come all the way down, hug your knees into your chest. Oh. <laughs> Alright, and then rock from left to right. Come to see. Okay, she's going to do it too. All right, rock back and forth. <laughs> She's on the back now. Happy baby, lift your legs up. Pull your knees down. See how close you can get the quads to the ground. Maybe straighten your legs if that feels good. You can switch your hand placement. So this is kind of open forum to, or open pose time. And now let's twist. So either cactus or tee out your arms. Now we have space usually in class we cactus because there's so many people. But here, let's tee them out, parallel your shins. Let's go ahead and um, eagle or just wrap left uh, left knee over right. Take a breath in. And then exhale, drop your legs over to the right. Look over to the left so you can get any back pops. Your right hand can then grab your right hip and push it down just a little bit for a little bit of an extra assist. Deep breaths into your left ribs. And then on your next inhale, bring it back to center. Before you do the other twist, keep your legs where they are. Squeeze your thighs even closer. 
grab for opposite um, feet with opposite hands, right? So your left hand is grabbing right ankle and then pull it in. So it's like a little knee pile. Can you see that? And then just kind of stretching out through the hips last time. And release, switch. Now the right knee goes over the left. Squeeze, eagle if you have it. Tee out your arms, breath in. Exhale, drop your legs to the left. So also, when I drop my legs, I kind of scooch that left hip back a little bit more. Ooh, there's a pop. And then left hand, right leg, give it a push, and look over your right shoulder. For three, two, and one. Come on up, knee pile. Both of your knees are crossed. Left hand, right ankle, right hand, left ankle. Squeeze the knees, bring the heels close to the glutes, and have a little stretch here. Breathe. And then go ahead and release. From here, it's your inversion practice. You can do legs up the wall. You can do shoulder stand. Or you can do your headstand practice. So I'm going to go for that. And we're going to go for one minute, wherever you are. If you're doing your headstand, um, practice the breathing. So close the eyes and really focus on the breath and sending the energy up. And when you're ready, come out of your aversion really slowly with control. If you took headstand, take child's pose with me. If you did shoulder stand, take your fish pose. If you did legs up the wall, take your fish pose. And if you're doing child's, I like to kind of rock on my forehead left and right because I feel all these nerve endings really awake in the back of your neck. You can even massage the back of your neck a little bit here. Kind of pulling the occipital uh, edge up. Does that make sense? So like that, that rim in your skull to give it more space. And then relax. Make your way into meditated seat or to Shavasana. So we're going to stay here for about another minute. So if you're in Shavasana, go ahead and close down your eyes, relax. If you're in meditative seat, palms face down for grounding, which I would recommend for this practice. If you do choose palms face up, that's for receiving guidance. Feel free. For me in this practice, I feel like this grounding practice was certainly needed in my life. So 
soften the face, soften the breath. Sit tall if you're in seat, meditative seat. Lifting the ribs, belly, mulabandha. There's a slight tuck to your chin. Relax the forehead. Relax the eyes, the ears, nose, the tongue. Relax the skin. And just breathe. When you're ready, if you're in Shavasana, make your way into infant's pose. And then up to Sukhasana, easy seat. From here, ground down through the sit bones. Breathe a little bit deeper. Fingers come outside the hips to the floor. And then on your inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Gather up all that peace, all of that grounding energy we just created. Press your palms together. On your exhale, bring your thumbs down to your heart center. Tuck your chin. The light, the teacher, and the student in me recognizes, honors, and reflects that same exact light, teacher, and student in you. Namaste. Okay, hey guys, uh, thank you again for our second live practice at Repoint. Um, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you for, for being here and practicing with me and uh, doing your thing. And yeah, I love it. I will see you guys on the mat again real soon. We will announce uh, more live classes. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you. Let's all be nice. <laughs> Bye.